Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. I'm Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. Today's thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, today's mindfulness minute is called Choosing What We Eat. Our way of eating and producing food can be very violent to other species, to our own bodies, and to the earth. Our way of growing and distributing and eating food can be part of creating a larger healing. We get to choose. The planet suffers deeply because of the way of the many ways we eat. Forests are cut to grow grain for to feed livestock, and the way that the animals are raised pollutes our water and our air. A lot of grain and water is also used to make alcohol. Tens and thousands of children die of starvation and malnutrition every day, even though our earth has the ability to feed us all. When each when each meal, we can make a choice that help or harm the planet. We shall eat today in very deep question. What shall we eat today is a very deep question. You might want to ask yourself this question every morning. You may find that as you practice mindful eating and begin to look deeply at what we eat and drink, you desire for certain food. You won't desire certain foods anymore. Your happiness and the earth are intertwined. Word up. Word up. So as you mentioned, we do have a special guest in the studio today. So her bio is extensive. So I'm just going to read a little bit. But Miss Anat Gordley is a pioneering free-spirited entrepreneur and a celebrity stylist. Okay, I'm going to need some of that. I'm just after the show, we'll talk. She is the founder of Vegans of Greater Dayton, Cincinnati, and two lifestyle companies, Mother of Eden and Virtue Concepts. Her passion for creating community educating people on healthy living and promoting plant-based well-being events shines through in all of her endeavors she has created a natural hair course that has been approved by the ohio state board of cosmetology which is a big deal because a lot of our um hairstylists don't know what to do with natural hair so having this course sounds amazing she's both an artist and an emergent voice of the texture revolution okay us texture girls we got some hope out there She has drawn from societal trends to design solutions that support behaviors that bring healing to the culture. Her aim is to bridge the gap between natural hair consumers and personal stylists. The driving force behind this is to help regain our integrity and respect into the cosmetology profession and the specialized market. Her Mother of Eden event is an events company born out of her deep commitment to creating a platform for members of the vegan and plant-based community to celebrate the foods they love. She's an avid skater, a music lover, okay? She's the proud mother of two wonderful children, just like us, Caleb and Eden. So welcome to the show, Miss Anat. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. Welcome indeed. So... Before we get into the vegan foodie choice awards, let's let's uh, break down the mother of Eden. What can you tell us about that? So, mother of Eden was born. Well, you see that my daughter's name is Eden, but also because of the fact that I am into holistic health, I thought it was very appropriate because when you think of the, the you know, a lot of us were raised in the Christian community, or you know. Um, even if you go back to African teachings, they do, they still talk about Eden being an actual um, place. And so mother of Eden, you could think of that as God or goddess, um, which I believe I am. So I just think it has like dual meanings. Um, so that's where mother of Eden came from. What was the question again? You said, tell me about mother of Eden. Yes. Okay. So Mother of Eden, um, that is the vehicle or the mother company of the event side of my business. So I'm going to be planning outside of just the Vegan Foodie Choice Awards. There will be other events that will be centered around plant-based dieters because we need that. Yes. 
indeed. <laughs> so what what type what type of events will those be? Woo. I'm trying not to share too much. Okay. Because I'm still in the planning phases. Uh -huh. Um just about any I want to say I'm a I'm an out of a, the box thinker. So I mean, I might have I might have something where we have like a picnic or something in the park, like a big a big expo in the park and we 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 jump in moon bounces. I don't know. Um I'm thinking about something near as far as in the um in 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 August, I'm thinking about something near the river. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, we'll... I don't want to put it out there yet. Right. My mom always taught me, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So uh, that's understandable. That's not we'll just we'll just keep we'll just keep watching out. We keep on the lookout for it. Um so um tell us about your other company that does with natural hair and the texture revolution. So when you asked me about my bio today, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to change some things because I feel like it's going to, it's going to be a little misleading because I don't actually do hair anymore. Mm -hmm. Unless now if a celebrity called, I'm going to go run, run it, depending on, you know, what I'm doing, if I'm available, um, if they need, if, if there was a celebrity that needed my assistance, as far as when it comes to actual hairstyling, I'll, I may do it, but I want to focus more now on teaching. Um, still, I would still, I would, I would do that and do some Udemy classes, you know, online, um, doing more classes still towards the stylist learning how to do textured hair or natural hair, um, because we still need that. Oh. Um, we still need that. So I was like, okay, I think I can still kind of intertwine that with everything that I'm doing. Cause I definitely don't want to lose my skill. I'll never I'll never uh, let my license lapse. So that would be the best way for me to keep active when it comes to the cosmetology industry. Um, so yeah, um, Mother of Eden, like I said, is the base for all plant-based or vegan events. And then I guess we'll get into the other, you know, you said the big event because you were on my live last night. That's how yes. you Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you there, Miss Lady Bounce? I was listening, but I wasn't logged in myself. I was actually doing paperwork, but I could hear it because he was sitting right next to me. And I was like, okay, okay, wait, wait a minute. You no, know, the sound was horrible. You guys hung in there. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's, let's jump into it. Let's jump into um, the big awards event, which to me sounds super, super dope. Um, uh -huh. I've been vegan since 2017 and before that before that i was vegetarian okay. um so as you know being in dayton it's hard to find those spots i mean our friend of ours molly had a spot for a year skater. oh yeah yeah that's 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 fam for us so oh, she's um, one of she's a fellow skater too yes <laughs> yes she is um so um we you know that was my everyday spot that I was going to when they were open. Um, I'm friends with Chef Dane, so I try to follow him wherever he goes. He always has a vegan option. He sets up at different places. Um, the We went to Barganada when he was there, and every time he's at Toxic Brew, I make sure I ask him. I see him you know, a couple times a week. I'm like, yo, where are you at this week? Where are you at this week? Because okay. it's hard to... Um, to find those spots and to have that food available so mostly you know it falls upon yourself to cook for yourself um so let's let's i am really excited about it and that's why I, you know when i was on a live i was saying like yo this sounds super dope and how i first heard about it was from sprouting dreams made a post about it a couple of weeks ago okay. um she had been a guest on our show before and also every time she's somewhere she's usually at the same spots that we pop up like the uh vegan food festival um and she does she's friends with some friends of ours at uh the barrel house so i have to like you know it's almost like chasing these people around just so you can get those options 
So I'm really excited about the um, event you're planning. So tell us about it. Wow. Okay. So I have some questions for you because I'm like, where? Is... We actually have quite a few places, but um, I guess it's just a matter of how much you want to venture out or, you know, how much research you do. But anyway, the Vegan Foodie Choice Awards came to, to me because I've been plant-based since 2011. And I was plant-based or vegan. I've been on a vegan diet since then. And it was really hard. There were no like good vegan cheeses. There was, I was cooking a lot then. Um, because, or I was eating a lot of Indian food or Thai food because I love both of them. And I, at that point, I didn't want anything that required quote unquote fake cheese or cheese. So I stayed away from food that you know called for cheese so for me the 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 best solution was just to eat indian food because it's so flavorful so um and then i travel a lot and i would go places and i just go gosh i wish you know somebody was here to kind of taste this with me i travel alone quite a bit and just being in other places seeing how much creativity that there was in the vegan world or as far as when it comes to vegan chefs it's just like wow and these people never get any shine they just don't they don't get well they get shine but they don't get to sit down and enjoy and you know be elevated by us in a way to where they're not actually working so i thought hmm let's put these two things together we hardly have any place to go where we totally feel comfortable as far as in a social environment. And the people that make our lives easier now, they don't have a platform to where they can be celebrated. Boom, let's marry that. So that's how the Vegan Foodie Choice Awards basically came to be. All right, that's dope. I, I love it. So is this, so when you say the, the food, the vegan food choice awards, is that just a Dayton thing? Is it a Cincinnati thing? Like, can I be from California and get nominated? How does that, that nomination process work? That's a great question. So we are basically the pilot or the inaugural, inaugural event is going to be in my hometown or in my home area. And so it covers... So the name of the event is, um, or the region is Ohio slash Southwest, or sorry, South, is it Southwest? Southwest, Southwestern Tri-State Area. So Kentucky, so Northern Kentucky, Indiana, all the way to Indianapolis. Um, so I'll tell you that it's Dayton. So this is the first area. There's five areas within this particular, as far as when it comes to people being able to nominate. So you can nominate vegan restaurants or vegan restaurants, or excuse me, restaurants with vegan options in Dayton, Cincinnati, or excuse me, Dayton, Yellow Springs, Springfield. The second area would be Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, Columbus, Cleveland slash Akron. And then I'm missing one. Oh, Indianapolis and Indy and Indiana, that, that corner that's near us. So those areas are going to be covered. And so people from all around who's ever, I mean, and, and honestly, you can cross, you can cross nominate. So let's just say you live in Cincinnati, but you come here a lot, or maybe you work here and you eat a lot of vegan food here. If you want to nominate, somebody from vegan but you i mean some from dayton but you live in cincinnati that's fine so what we do is after the nomination process is over then we tally up and we take the top 10 in each of those five cities or areas that we talked about and then that's when the voting for the actual winners will be and there's going to be three categories vegan you know like the 100 vegan um chef or vegan restaurant vegan options and then sweet treats 
the reason that at first it was only going to be two places or two two categories but i made it three because of there was quite a few of the the nominees that i was seeing when i would go research them i'm like oh they just do treats and i don't think it would be fair for us to vote for them in those two other categories because they're not really selling food you know what i mean they're just selling like cakes and ice cream and you know so i, I felt that they needed their own category I yeah. Like that. yeah. Oh, and so the next one, I'm either looking at the Chicago area, Chicago and um, the northern mis- Midwest area or either Atlanta. So I still haven't decided which one's going to be next. I'm thinking I'm, I'm pulling more towards Atlanta next. Mm. I like it. So you said you've been vegan since 2011. How did you start your journey? Like did you just wake up and decide you wanted to be vegan or did you have like a health scare like I have a friend who had a health scare and as a result of her health scare completely changed her diet and now she is full vegan and I'm like watching her grow in her veganness and I'm like so happy for her and so amazed and she was able to uh, alleviate all of those medical conditions that she had that led up to her being vegan in the first place so tell us how did you get started being vegan Woo, I have admired, and it wasn't back in the day. I don't know how old you guys are, but you know, back in the day, it was veganism was not a thing, it was just vegetarianism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and there was different, there was death, there was different facets of vegetarianism. You could be ovo lacto, just ovo or lacto, you know what I mean, or you could just not just be a they say a vegetarian. So you know let's just i say get that out of the way but i have been admiring the lifestyle of vegetarianism slash veganism since i was a little girl because my dad was um he raised us to be somewhat you know holistic and there was a period when i was about five or six where my dad stopped us from eating meat and i remember he was buying soy burgers (laughs) from the health food store and i just i just loved you know, that we went to the health food store and bought a lot of different things. Um, and then, you know, going to high school, being around your peers and they're eating steak and all oh, that was the other thing. Once we did go, um, once we did go back into eating animal products, it was just mainly chicken fish um, or, you know, yeah, chicken fish, turkey. Um, so back in 2008-ish, I went whole food. So I still ate animal products, but I had somewhat of an awakening because I was in massage school at the time and we were were learning Eastern theory. And Eastern theory and the combination of taking anatomy and physiology was so spiritual. It was crazy. Um, I went on my first cleanse and the cleanse was my aim was 21 days but i only made it to 18 but i remember all the spiritual things that i was feeling and all the detoxes that were happening and um i still wanted to go the vegan route but i still wasn't ready yet so i i i I ebbed off slowly and i just said well we'll just eat whole foods from now on so that was 2008 ish 2011 comes um i'm at aveda and I get sick and they wanted to call the ambulance. And I was like, no, because I didn't have insurance at the time. I was like, no, don't call. I guess I'll just die here on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, wait, you're feeling clammy. And I didn't know. I thought, so with the symptoms that I was having, I thought I had gallbladder issues. And so I suffered for 10 whole years thinking that I had gallbladder issues because on my mother's side of the family, almost every girl cousin um, that I have on my first, uh, and I have 41st cousins on my mom's side. Um, cause it was, yeah. Cause it's 12 of them. Um, <laughs> so between the 12, there's 40 of us. Um, all of the girls pretty much either had their gallbladder taken out or they had gallbladder issues. So I just assumed that that's what it was. And I was having these gallbladder attacks and I was just like, okay, that's it. So I did at that point, I cleansed. And after I cleansed, I was like, I'm going to try to go vegan for 30 days just to see how I feel. 
and that 30 that um that 30 days stretched out to be I went from 2011 to 2014. Then I had a very, I had a personal crisis happen. My son passed away. He would have been 26 this year. And it was in 2013. And then I kind of like relapsed in 2014 from grief and everything. And I felt like that sh this show was appropriate enough to bring that up. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, so I went back into eating just cheese and egg and oh my goodness I blew up and I felt horrible and I had bumps all over my face which I don't have bumps on my face really and um yeah and I binged on sugar and then I went through coaching and therapy and then I got back on track and I remember saying I will never leave that lifestyle ever again and my why was a lot bigger at that point once I once I stepped back into the lifestyle um, and I went back. It was, I had the hi hiatus for, was a, for about a year and a half. So I got back on track in, that was 2014 when I got off track and I got back on track in March of 2016. Okay. Dope, dope. That's a dope story. I like that. <laughs> so, um, let's, um, get back to the, um, about the awards, um, you had something there we talked about ad drop sponsorship. How can someone be a part of that? And how does that work? Okay, so if you've ever been to a gala or some type of like fundraising event, they will generally have booklets where they would, they would have on your table. So instead of it being a booklet, um, because they'll take time to make, you know, it takes a lot of time to kind of like plan that. Um, and because this is the first event, that's the only reason that we're not having a booklet, so to speak. Um, and plus, I thought it would be better to do a little, you know, like a little goodie bag. And businesses could put, you know, their uh, gift certificates or discount cards or um, some type of something very incentive like in the bags versus it being on a page you know what i mean oh, you can mm -hmm. actually take the you could take that 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 um discount card or a punch card or wherever and it's a good way i think it's a good way to advertise the business um that is a good alternative to if you wanted to come and be a vendor for the event as far as i'm saying having a table set up it would, I think, you know, having the tables set up and everything would just be clutter, number one. Two, um, and I don't mean like clutter in a bad way, but just, you know, because of the venue and the size and all the stuff that I'm planning on having around, it would just take up too much space. Um, but also because I really want people to focus on having a good time. Um, a lot of you bring that up and I, I, I wanted to address this again. I know I talked about it on my, my live yesterday, but and this is a self-care show. So many of the chefs are so used to grinding that they don't want, they, or they don't really know that they're just not understanding this concept of, oh my gosh, I don't have to perform. I don't have to go somewhere and, 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 you know, I don't want to say, well, compete for business or, you know, uh -huh. I, I heard disappointment in a few of the, or felt the disappointment, um, come through the screen and I was just, like, oh my gosh, these people are so used to grinding. They're just used to grinding that they don't understand quite yet that this event is the one event where they are going to be elevated. And they don't have to perform, so to speak, in order to get the attention that they actually deserve. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's dope because I, I know that when you're in the action of doing what you're doing, like you said, you don't get to enjoy the event. Um, I know we, we hosted a couple of events at the Dayton African American Culture Festival this past summer. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we had a, a table, a vendor table, but we're like, 
had to make a choice like do we focus on making the shows dope or, do, or is our focus on the table you know lucky enough our daughter worked the table for us but she you know she probably wouldn't push it like we would be pushing sales so we just like had to bite the bullet we really weren't even thinking about that we actually together were like we're gonna make this, make sure that the episodes are dope so um, i mean yeah okay. it's, 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 this is what you were doing at the event yeah at the at, at, at the dayton african-american culture festival we we did like two live versions of the show like extended versions mm-hmm. um we did one on um hip-hop culture and then we did one on spirituality and the african-american community um, okay. we had one for each day so yeah when you when you're doing that and you're doing that it's kind of hard to enjoy you know what I'm saying? Like, especially if you work in a, a vendor spot, it's hard to enjoy the actual event that's going on. So, definitely. Luck, yeah. No, no go yeah. ahead. I was just saying, I, I was agreeing with you. Like, yeah, I was trying to decide between, you know, which one to do and, and realizing, you know, like, like um, Anat was saying is that you're being elevated. You're being celebrated. So, no, you don't have to hustle and sweat for the crowd. The crowd what? is here for you. Plus, the event, the, the venue does not allow outside food. <laughs> right. I'm like, right. perfect. Because, you know, I don't want anybody coming in here. I mean, those people, I don't want them coming in here thinking that, you know, they have to do that. This is not, I, I'm just wondering how it's going to be when they're going to get to actually eat food and sit in. I just want to look around and see the faces. I wonder if there's going to be tears, actually, because they're just mm. not going to believe. Like, I, I really get to sit here and just eat vegan food and be with the people, be with some of my patrons. And you know what I mean? Like, I'm just wondering how that's going to go, how they're going to take that in or if they're going to take it in. I definitely think that will. I think that's going to be a, a real dope. And a speaking of event, you were talking about on the live um far as the dress the dress attire and uh so talk talk a little bit about that, that. you that, that commented on that i didn't comment on it comment it but i saw the comments that were happening at the time okay. and i and i saw you like breaking it trying to break it down yeah that's so funny because when people started asking about that i was like oh god i gotta i gotta i can't be russell simmons anymore i can't just pop up at the end of the event and say thank god for <laughs> be black next week <laughs> <laughs> i can't i literally was just like i'm gonna be Russell Simmons. after the event is over i'm like thank y'all for coming out god bless good night and that's it and my cousins and you know other people i know they're doing this i mean they know i'm doing this or whatever like you can't do that you know people are gonna start having questions and you know you're the, really the only one that has the answer so you you i'm sorry you just gonna have to start showing your face you're gonna have to <laughs> i was like oh okay so when that question came up i was like i i have to answer this because of the fact that i created the event i want to set the tone and i don't want people to think that you kind of gotta you can't be yourself and come to this event I want you to be yourself. I want us to be us. If that if that makes sense. So, oh, it made sense to me when you said it. I got it right away. But I know okay. a lot of people might be confused by it. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Because, I mean, you know, even though you might... I don't want to put everybody in the same box and say, Oh, we're all, like, free-spirited and bohemian-like. And, you know, maybe not everybody's like that. And that's why I said, if you come in there with a shirt and a tie and some slacks, okay. If that's who you are and that's how you dress, cool. Nobody's gonna judge you. I don't. I'm definitely not gonna judge you. But but if you want to come in there with a handmade, you know, long denim, crazy, you know, something that you just made up or somebody made for you, oh my god, like I would love that. You know what I mean? Like if you made the denim look fly, I don't want you coming in. I don't want anybody coming in there with street clothes on, like something that you wear every day or that you're going to go to the store right. and the mall. But you get what I'm saying? I don't yeah. I don't necessarily want you to feel like you're going to your high school prom or a very formal dinner like you're going to meet the president either. You know what I mean? I want you yeah. to Yeah, that's dope. I like that. <laughs> 
I'm like, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. And uh, she's been wanting to do something fancy for a long time. I'm a hood guy, so I usually do hood stuff. <laughs> you know okay. I'm, I'm usually a hood spots, you know. <laughs> and she's been wanting to, hey, I want to get fancy. I, I'm with it too, but, you know, I just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, I'm usually at the bar. I'm usually at hip hop spots. I'm an artist myself, so I'm, a, you know, usually in grimy spots, you know, so. A chance to get fresh on them. I'm so with, you mean like grimy, like the palms grimy? No, 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 no. Like hip hop <laughs> no. grimy. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like 90s backpack hip hop grimy. You know what I'm oh, saying? I wonder if we're around the same age. Probably. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm going to be 48 this year. So. Okay. I'm 40. I'll be 46. So. Okay. So yeah, you in between the two of us. Oh, lady so bounce, are- lady bounce would be forty three, so be forty four this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, and, and lady bounce is a DJ too, so you know we usually be at hip hop spots, you know. Okay. Hmm. Ooh, that tea is strong. But anyway, so yeah, um, that's the attire. I knew I, I knew I was going to have to explain that. And I just had to get over. It's not. It's not a. It's not a, a fear of speaking. I have no problem with that. It's just I don't like any type of spotlight on me. But I've just gone ahead and accepted the call that it sometimes. You know, like even when you ask me to do this, usually it takes me a long time to decide on whether or not I want to do something. But something, you know, um, said, you know what? Yeah, go ahead, do this one. This is. And I didn't even I didn't even research you guys <laughs> until like after I said yes. And I was like, what did I say yes to? But I just <laughs> I've learned to trust my instincts. Um I'm extremely empathic. So when I feel something and it doesn't feel good to me, I go, mm mm, nope. And I'll just say no immediately. But to you guys, I really did. I just said, Yeah, I'll do that. Then after I said, I was like, what did I say that for? <laughs> what did I say yes to? <laughs> yeah, I said, what did I say yes to? I said, it must have been good if I said it like that. Because, yeah, and then I, and, and then when I looked up everything, I said, this is my lane. This is, this is, this is my lane. So, yeah, I could, I'm glad I said uh, yes. All right, uh, we, we definitely appreciate it. So, with all the stuff in the mini hats you wear, um, what do you do for self care? What do I do for self care? lay down relax like not even joking i'm at the point where i can literally if i if i could i would stay in the bed all day and just stretch my legs and move my you know like do dorsal flexes with my feet so i could stretch my calves um um i just bought myself a self massager um as far as that but when it as far as the assignment as far as self-care i think self where it's important is and a lot of people don't like this but i think it's important for you to speak up for yourself mm. I, I, think is, I think that is self-care and i speak up for myself a lot but a lot of people sometimes they don't like me for it you know when you speak up for yourself people don't like it a lot of times especially if you're calling a person's uh, if a person was, is mistreating you or if they've mistreated you uh-huh. and you say about it, people expect you to just take just, it I, just take it and uh-huh. one of the things that drives me crazy about human beings is that instead of going to the source and talking to the source about where the offense was people would rather go and talk to their call the person on the phone guess what such and such said to me da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. i would mm-hmm. tell my cousins i tell my mom if i if i'm talking about you to somebody else it's because i already told you just trust and believe i already told you how i felt i'm right. not going to right. talk behind your back and you not know why you know what i mean so yeah self so for me i feel like that's the biggest thing that I would really love to see people do more is just to speak up for themselves and call out bad behavior 
if especially if it's affecting you um so yeah that's definitely dope that's dope i love it that's that's definitely a big thing and uh my spiritual teacher he always says you only have five friends the sixth one is a lie so i mean that, that you know Ooh, something five? to think about something. yeah he said five quite generous. really really great friends the sixth one is a lie so i mean it's something to think about. I think about it all the time. I mean, I have a small camp of people that we know that are tr tremendously dependable. If you say, hey, this needs to be done right now, they're going to do it. And then you have associates that you can depend on sometimes. And you can talk to them about certain things without them being betrayal. But like five close friends is what he says. So, man, it's something to yeah. think about. That is um, something to think about. My dad always told me, you're lucky if you have three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he used to always say, you only have one real true friend. My dad used to say that, but everybody, you know, I was like, five? That's generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, sorry, also, before we... No, that's cool. Uh, also, before we get out here, please let the people know how they can get in touch with you about all the different things you do especially the war show coming up okay so vegan foodie choice awards or you could uh, um instagram and facebook it's at vegan foodie choice awards there's no spaces no underscores um vegan foodie choice awards um, you can also reach out to me on veganfoodiechoiceawards.com, motherofeden.com. So that is, oh, an email address, uh, veganfoodiechoiceawards at gmail.com. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Now, of course, before we in the show i gotta get into my favorite part of the show doom, 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 doom. brain science <laughs> science 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 i know it's coming and i still laugh every show it's hilarious <laughs> all right and so this week our brain science is going to piggyback off of our mindfulness minute and piggybacks off of our guest about mindful eating so if we're still in february everybody's still trying to fight their new year's resolutions they're, they're some have faltered some are still going so i'm gonna help you out so here's a new, re new Year's resolution you can keep. Stop dieting and start savoring your food instead. That may seem like surprising advice, but there's mounting scientific evidence that suggests that diets don't work. Research shows that food restriction just makes you want to eat more. And over the long term, dieting can backfire, triggering your body's survival defenses, slowing your metabolism and making it even harder to lose the weight in the future. So your resolution to quit dieting doesn't mean stop having a healthy body but successfully to successfully conquer a dieting habit you need to let go of old ideas about counting calories about banning your favorite foods and measuring across a number scale so what is the alternative many weight researchers are encouraging a new approach to healthy eating and it's based on brain science many of these techniques encourage mindful awareness of how we eat and accepted related foods that we want to eat and intuitive eating exercises can all be used to quell cravings and reshape our eating habits. So we've talked about before on the show, plant-based diets. And if you can't go plant-based 100% right away, taper off slowly. Start with, I'm not going to eat this. I'm going to give this up. Okay, now that I've mastered that, I'm going to add this into the things I'm not going to eat. So with the foods that you do choose to eat, avoid labeling foods as good or bad. Your goal is to focus on what tastes good, the textures of food, and how you feel before, during, and after eating. There are lots of vegan food choices and plant-based alternatives that taste just like the real thing, and you can trick your brain into thinking you are eating the real thing if you practice mindful eating. So, what's the real thing? Oh, go ahead. Well, you know, when people say, like, a steak <laughs> versus a plant-based steak or you know, vegan cheese versus cheese oh. made from cow's milk. So I avoid saying that vegan food is fake food because I think that sounds dumb because it's real. It's more real food than the stuff that people are actually eating. So, yeah, I don't 
I don't agree. do real and the fake food. I'm just like <laughs> this food or that food, you know? So before every meal this week, try this simple awareness exercise. That way you're not tricking and restricting your diet. So check in with your body every time you eat. On a scale of one to 10 or zero to 10, zero being an empty stomach and 10 being uncomfortably full, how hungry are you right now? Mm. Next, look at the food you're eating. Observe its textures and its colors. Smell your food. Pick up your fork and take a bite. As you chew, put your fork down and pay careful attention to how the food tastes, how it feels in your mouth, and after several bites, check in with your body to see if you're even still hungry. Hmm. So, after you do that, let's map out our eating habits. We're going to work on our eating behavior that we will change. So, if it's eating less sugar or eating more protein, we're going to incorporate those little bit by little bit. We're going to ask ourselves... What behave? What sorry? What eating behavior do we want to change? Do we want to snack more, snack less, eat more whole grains? Now, think about what triggers this behavior. When you overeat, are you overeating because of emotions like anger or stress, or are you hurting yourself with the treats? Hmm. Treats are good in moderation, like anything else, right? Then you're gonna focus on the results. Before you eat, ask yourself some questions. What am I getting from this? How will eating this food make me feel? Think about how you felt the last time you ate it. Did you enjoy it? Did you end up eating too much? Did you feel uncomfortably full or nauseous? Did you feel guilty later and beat yourself up for eating it? Mm -hmm. Thinking about how food makes you feel before, during, and after you eat updates the information your brain has about how rewarding or not a food really is. And it can help break the hold that a particular food has on you. Wow. Word up. Excellent. Where'd you get that from? That one came from uh, the New York Times Eat Well Challenge. I like it. They did it pretty good with that one. Yeah. Word up. So, so uh, sister, not any last words that you would like to say before we get out of here? No, I mean, I just want to thank you for inviting me. It was, uh, it's, I'm also seeing um, that I'm meeting new people because we know dating is small, but I love that now that I'm kind of creeping out of my hermit hole, that there's actually some people that I really don't know and that's in the community, so to speak. So, and Lady Bounce, are you, are you, are you vegan or are you? Are, are... I am not. I still eat chicken, turkey and fish and okay. cheese has the biggest um, hold oh, on me. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm not judging. I just asked because I was like, she, I didn't hear her mention, you know, if she, <laughs> no. so I, no, no shame. I was just asking, just, <laughs> just asking. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just I'm really pleased to meet you and thank and, you. Uh, us as well. Yeah, thank you definitely. so much for inviting me. This was this was very wholesome. Thank you guys for doing this. Keep doing this show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and once again, you know where to find us. We find you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. We're on social medias. Facebook, IG, and Twitter, and TikTok. So be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, that's our show for today. It's your boy Picket Fence. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. Peace.